Thank you very much, William, and thank you also, Kat. And um, well, it's a pleasure for us to be at uh, Helen's Garden Festival. As you can see behind us, we've got a backdrop of uh, Malvern Priory Park here so that we can just make it feel like we're, we're part of the whole thing. Um, we are from BCARM SCDD and we're members of the British Hemp Alliance. And today our talk is going to be about hemp. Um, we consider it to be a miracle plant. And we're going to ask the question, is hemp truly a misunderstood multiple miracle resource of our time? My name's Craig Trafford. And I'm Laura Trafford. And together we run the company, it's a small business, Malvern based, um, called bkarmacbd.com. So um, both Paul and myself are natural holistic health practitioners. That's our, our, our first level of qualification and area of expertise. Uh, combined, we have roughly about 60 years experience between us in this particular field. And um, Paul will perhaps explain a little bit about who she is, where she comes from. Yes, hello. Um, so I am um, aromatherapist. I'm one of the first people in the country to get a CBD qualification, so I'm qualified to blend CBD in my treatments, uh, massage, and I can also make um, CBD blends and bar. Uh, and that's a course that only came out, um, I think it was late last year, because CBD is fairly new into this country. Um, so yeah, so I'm a, a natural health practitioner, Pilates teacher, and a creative and uh, yoga, mindfulness and meditation teacher. And I'm Craig, I'm energy, medicine and advanced EFT practitioner, emotional freedom techniques. I'm also a kinesiologist um, and a stress therapist. And more lately, more recently, uh, um, thanks to this COVID uh, event, uh, I've become more of a content creator as well. Um, that is providing information for online consumption. Uh, now, become a CBD. The reason why CBD is going to be relevant is because it's an extract from the hemp plant, which we're going to be talking about today. So our mission at Become a CBD is this, to relax everybody. That's our mission. That's always been our mission as um, holistic therapists. And it's becoming even more important with uh, what's going on at the moment because our environment is overstressed. As you can see, these are, these are areas uh, in this particular slide that, that depict um, some of the issues that are facing us, some of the critical issues facing us uh, in, this, in this era in which we live. Um, I'm facing our environment. I, I don't know if many of you will remember this, but I remember when it happened. This, this over here on the left, this is Chernobyl. Um, and if you remember, Chernobyl was a radioactive leak all over the, the, um, the area uh, in Ukraine. And this is the kind of stuff that gets spouted out from our industrial complexes. And these are the kind of results that we're looking at. Um, the, the damage to, to the earth, but particularly to the soil. And why we're highlighting these um, incidents and events and processes at the moment is uh, going to become more apparent as we move deeper into the talk, into today's talk. So stress is everywhere. And most people are overstressed, particularly now. And um, both Paul and myself, um, our, our love is to, to help people to, to relax on very, very deep levels, because it's by relaxing at those deep levels. And why do you walk around the garden, for example? Why do you walk in the beauty of nature? We need to relax, we need to relax. That's, that's one of the reasons we love it so much. Um, we love to walk around a beautiful garden. It just gives you that sense of, <sighs> and it, it kind of links in with nature, doesn't it? It's, you balances know, like, you, grounds you. Balances and grounds, and so obviously, like walking around gardens is a fantastic thing to do. Um, we ourselves, with our hemp-based products, 
as you can see down here, we're at the Fold Sunday Market. So this has been um, a more recent uh, addition to our um, fledgling small business, which we were going to launch in April, by the way, become a CBD, but something got in the way called COVID. So uh, we've taken much of what we do online, um, seems to have responded quite well. But we do enjoy doing these um, Sunday markets, particularly the Fold, because um, places like Fold and Helen's, they really care for the environment and we like to support that in any way we can. So we like to be part of it, we like to, to join in and, and talk um, with people about how they work with the environment, how they work with their gardens and plants. So this is how you'll see us attired if you ever um, choose to come to one of the Sunday markets. So relax everybody. Um, how do we do that? Well, we share CBD and hemp products. Uh, we share therapeutic information that is information on how you can care for yourself, how you can improve your immune system, which is very relevant at this time. Um, and we also offer and create empowering educative experiences, you know, online talks being, being one of them. And some of the reasons that we're doing this is because stress is killing people. It's killing families, communities, cultures, societies, nature and the environment. So much of it unnecessary. At Become CBD, we share products and processes that enable people to evoke the power of their innate relaxation response. Now, most of us are aware of um, the, the response that we have to stress, which is very much, um, it, we switch on the fight or flight syndrome. And this is going to be quite important to understand as we go deeper into this talk. Uh, about the hemp plant. Um, most of us don't use the other side, the, the opposite side, the parasympathetic nervous system, in the way that we um, restore ourselves to balance, perhaps after an illness or perhaps on, on a daily basis uh, going through stress. So the rest and digest or rest and repair element of our immune system is incredibly important. And that's why our mission is to relax everybody, because by relaxing everybody, um, we can help people to become aware of that process, how important and crucial it is to rest, digest, and increase your bliss. Everybody loves a kitten, don't they? We're all looking at it. I just wanted to say, if anybody has any questions, if you write them in the chat box below, and we'll do our very best to answer them at the end. Okay. Good point. Thank you. So how do we help people to rest and digest? How do we do that from uh, plant world? How do we personally do it for myself? Well, a few years ago, we made a um, discovery um, for our own lives. Um, we have two children, young boys with ADHD, and uh, they were struggling, one of them particularly in the education system. And we came across this product, which is an extract of the hemp plant. And um, we thought, well, surely that's cannabis, is it? And actually, it, it kind of is, but it kind of isn't. It's from the cannabis sativa um, genus, but it's not marijuana. So it's not the stuff that gets you high. This is industrial hemp or agricultural hemp. We came across this and we came across the, the drops, uh, the drops of oil. And we, we experimented on ourselves and our family and we had some fantastic results with it. So hemp, as, I, as I've just explained, is, is quite different from um, the marijuana plant. And we consider it a miracle plant. We consider it a miracle worker. Because it's the strongest natural fiber in the world, and it has over 50,000 different uses. I don't know if, apart from water, perhaps, um, you can think of any other um, resource that has over 50,000 different uses. We'll be showing you some of the uses in a moment or two. But that is something that really, um, really woke us up to, to the potential of the hemp plant. So not just for our own internal consumption in order to help invoke the relaxation response, but also if we can have a resource that is fully sustainable and natural, why not use it? 
Now, if you look at this um, picture here, we'll leave this up for a, for a moment or two. You can see that some of the 50,000 uses are in textiles, building materials, body care, industrial textiles, um, paper and foods. You can see that there are lots and lots of different uses. And in fact, in this country, um, in the times of King Henry VIII, it was illegal not to grow hemp. If you had a small holding or a garden, you had to grow hemp uh, so that they could make ropes and sails for the Royal Navy, which King Henry was um, expanding at the time. So, Even after Prohibition, when, when it was made illegal, when there was a Second World War, it was stopped and they said, you must grow hemp. Yeah. And then when the war was over, they then made it uh, illegal again. Yeah, yeah. Which is, which is quite strange. There's a lot of controversy around this plant, which is uh, another reason to be so excited about it because, um, I mean, for myself, I, I do tend to be a bit investigative and very curious. And I think, oh, if something's being prohibited, why? Let's, let's get deeper into it. Uh, particularly if it's a plant and it comes from nature. So evidence shows us that hemp may have been the first crop ever cultivated by mankind. So we're going back thousands of years and seeing that hemp was cultivated way, way, way back. And um, probably because it produces crucial resources such as food, rope, clothing, paper, housing material, fuel, etc. So there are three main core uses of this miracle plant, as we like to put it. You can eat the seeds raw, you can ground them into meal, like porridge. You can have hemp porridge. Um, you can also make milk from it. Hemp milk's really tasty, actually, isn't it? Really nice. And you can use it as a protein powder. It's a really healthy protein. And it gets pressed into oil. Um, it can be used as paint. It can be used to make ink. And you can make body care products from it. And these are just a few. We're just scratching the surface here. So seeds is one of the main ways in which hemp is, is used. And bast or fibre is another way. Now, if you look at this picture, you can see where we get the whole rope thing from. And I do wonder sometimes if, uh, you know, maybe somebody just found a hemp stalk one day, opened it up and voila, oh wow, look. What happens if we, if we twist this? Wow, it's really strong. What happens if we, uh, if we put another piece onto it and tie another piece onto it? Wow, it's really strong. This, this is really good stuff. Let's make a bridge, etc. So, So um, this comes from inside the sliced stalks, and it's stronger than steel. Hard to believe, but it's actually stronger than steel. Um, and it's used to make apparel, bags, rope, canvas, carpet, netting, and so on, so forth. So when you see the, the old dinghies out sailing, all those wonderful sailing ships in some Turner paintings, they've all got hemp. They're, they're packed with hemp. The other main core use is um, the herd, also known as the shiv. So it's the woody core, the stem. It's high in cellulose, and it has thermal and acoustic properties. So it's used in cement, insulation, paper and pulp for biodegradable plastics. So this, we're talking about one of the most incredibly sustainable plants on the planet. It's a very, very friendly plant. There you go, there's a sample of some of the rope. I'm sure you've all seen twine like this, some used twine like this at some time in life. This is a car door made from hemp. So it's a moulded car door made from hemp. Ten times stronger than steel. Henry Ford had a dream of building cars from hemp and of powering cars from hemp. Interestingly, didn't quite get there because I think the oil lobby was so strong at the time. Um, of course, that's another controversial arena. And there's a lovely dressing gown uh, made from hemp. This is a house made from hemp. So the bricks, I don't, I don't think the windows are made from hemp, but the bricks and all the other parts of the house made entirely from hemp. Um, so I think this is the, the, one of the first of its kind made by the Donagro um, Hemp Group in Holland. 
Um, I we we I think we met people at one of the um, hemp exhibitions last year, um, and they had just secured a contract up in the northeast to produce. Um, what was it? It was a uh, what was it? It was a, it was a housing project, wasn't it? Yeah, housing. something like four to seven hundred houses um, made out of hempcrete, which is a, a form of concrete made from hemp, made from the hemp plant. So the more that we start to use this stuff, the quicker the prices will go down and the more people will be able to um, help uh, themselves with, with hemp products. Here is another particularly beautiful hemp house. I think this one is in Japan somewhere. And as you can see from the notes, it's got three times more structural stability than concrete stability to withstand earthquakes. Now that is, is very, very good news in places like Japan and probably places like California. Not, we, we don't really get um, affected too much by earthquakes over in the UK. But that just gives you some indication of the versatility um, of this beautiful resource, this amazing resource, this incredible plant. And it's quite a nice house. Who wouldn't like to at least have a holiday and something like that? I'd quite like to live in one of those myself. So they a beautiful gardens, fantastic. Here are some other products, common everyday products that are also made from hemp. And uh, we think that it's, it, it's got the capacity and it's got the ability to quickly outcompete oil-based products. So many people believe that we're seeing peak oil at the moment, which you know I think could be a very, very good thing for our planet. Um, and other people might be going, well, what are we going to replace it with? Well, here we are. We can replace it with hemp really quickly. We have, we're slowly building the infrastructure, but if we can get it moving a bit more, build factories and processes to churn out more of this stuff. Or everything that you see on here is completely biodegradable because it's all made from hemp, from hemp plastic. Here's the world's first hemp aeroplane. It's made entirely from hemp. It's a four-seater plus a place for the pilot, thankfully. Um, all the upholstery is made from hemp, and it's 10 times stronger than steel, and it's powered by hemp oil. It's made by hemp earth. Any of this, you can go and research for yourself, and you'll see that we're not kidding here. This isn't a mock-up. I think somebody might have photoshopped this little thing on here. It looks a bit obvious to me. Um, I can't see the G-dash either. But um, yes, made entirely from hemp. What a fantastic thing to do, if you've got the time. Now, this is the area that might interest you if you are uh, interested in gardens and gardening. The phytoremediation qualities of the hemp plant. Hemp plants can naturally clean out toxins from polluted soil. Now, if you go back to the pictures that we showed you right at the beginning of all that polluted soil, we know that soil throughout the world has been weakening, um, particularly because of uh, overuse, monoculture, pesticides, herbicides, Roundup, all that nasty, nasty stuff from people that we won't mention today. Um, and it absorbs man-made pollutants and heavy metals like nickel, cadmium, selenium. The roots grow one and a half to three foot and effectively reach deep into the soil. So this phytoremediation process, this transforming of almost dead soil into living soil again, goes really deep into the earth. Um, the, the plant actually stores and sucks up the toxins as well. And you might think, oh my goodness, what? Then we're going to put it on the, on the skin. Well, no, no, it doesn't quite um, work that way except in areas where you're using it as a, as a clean-up resource. So... Can I yes. just want to say, um, if you grew hemp and marijuana together um, over five years, the hemp would totally dominate the marijuana and wipe it out. Yeah. So um, it, it, it's, it's really, really strong. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think when you're saying that, what, what Paul was saying is that hemp itself has high levels of CBD, which is the calming 
um, compound, if you like. Um, when people smoke a split, they're doing that to, to get high and they're also doing it to enjoy the calming effect. Well, the CBD, um, which comes from the industrial or agricultural hemp plant, is the calming side of it. The hemp that we sell, the hemp-based products we sell, have virtually no THC at all. You can't actually get a high off anything that, that we sell, and it will be illegal to do so in this country. So um, our products have less than 0.02% THC. Um, and when Paula talks about putting a, a hemp plant next to a marijuana plant, what happens is, I think it's over the process of three growth generations, so it's less than five years, three growth generations, the CBD, high CBD level in the hemp plant will gradually overwhelm the high THC level in the marijuana plant, therefore transforming marijuana plantation into CBD plantation. So it's very, very dominant. It's a very dominating plant. That's it, it yeah. It's really dominating. Yeah. Um, and CBD is just one of its endocannabinoid qualities. It's uh, the now products coming out with CBG, CBN, and all these different compounds that are so healthy for human beings and animals and the environment. Now, back to the phytoremediation process. Phytoremediation can remove radioactive elements from soil and water. We've known this since 1998. That's taken from the Central Oregon Green Pages. We've known that phytoremediation can remove radioactive elements from soil and water. So it can be used to clean up metals, pesticides, solvents, explosives, crude oil, polyaromatic hydrocarbon, hydrocarbons, and toxins leaching from landfills. So why aren't we growing it everywhere? That's a question to, to ask. Why are we not growing this amazing miracle plant everywhere? If only for these reasons, it's an environment transformer. It grows very fast. It's a bit like weed, it just takes off. Two growing seasons in a year. And it harmonizes with, with other plants as well. It, I don't think it completely takes over. Um, but the interesting thing is that the waste from all this phytoremediation is then converted into bioethanol, which is used to fuel engines. So there's no waste, or very little waste. That's a miracle in itself. I've, um, I've, I've, I've managed to find this um, example on the internet of, oops, let's go back a bit there. There we go. So you can see that, that fossil fuel emissions are huge, they're high. But if we were to use corn ethanol, that is um, fuel, petrol type fuel, from um, instead of instead of uh, fossil fuels, you see it reduces, you, you get 19, 28, 52% reduction. If we go to sugarcane ethanol, that is biomass fuel made by sugarcane, you get 78% reduction. But if you go to the cellulose and biomass from um, hemp plants, you get an 86% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions compared to fossil fuels. So the question is begged again, why aren't we growing this plant all over the world, in our own back gardens, everywhere? Why aren't we doing it? If ever there were a perfect time to seed the world with a miracle, it's now. The potential of hemp for restorative environmental balance is unrivaled anywhere. The potential of hemp as a single resource with over 50,000 plus potential uses is unrivaled anywhere. And the potential of hemp as a medical wonder plant and sustainable support to human and animal well-being is unrivaled anywhere. So, current uses for humans, well, we can't make any claims, and I don't think we would make any claims. I don't think it's responsible anyway for... Uh, there are um, CBD companies who do make claims, but I, I don't think it's... I think it's important not to make um, medical claims. Um, we're just reporting evidence that people are using CBD, CBG, CBN, terpenes, etc., from the hemp cannabis sativa compounds to self-treat all manner of ailments, including some of the issues in the next few slides. I've put a disclaimer about there, um, and we've, we've done that because I think we, we have to. <laughs> okay. We sell CBD oils and balm, balms. 
So they're extracted, these oils are extracted from hemp, industrial hemp. And the reason that, that we're selling them is because we believe that they're, they offer unrivaled support for people's well-being. Um, and just, yeah, when we started using it with our youngest son, um, we didn't want to put him on Ritalin and we're looking for a natural alternative being natural health practitioners and it had a completely profound effect on him and the school, we called it his calming drops because we didn't really want the school knowing what, it, you know, because there was all this controversy, oh my goodness, is it marijuana and this and the other. So we just said it's, it's got some calming drops and the school said these calming drops are really working and uh, having a a really great effect on it and eventually I think it was in the secondary school um, we told them it was CBD and they, they were absolutely make sure he's taking his calming drops because um, it, it's having a, a really amazing effect but it was wearing off after lunch and then eventually I think it was probably one of the first schools in the country we got the doctors to sign saying he could take that into school so um, that's becoming um, a more available thing that you can put the children can take into school. Mm. Um, yeah, well, I, I mean, that's one of the first known uses we were aware of, isn't it, of, yeah. of, of that being um, used as an alternative um, way to support calmness through ADHD, I think that's the best way to put it. Yeah, and, the, and our eldest son took it before his GCSEs and um, just really enjoyed taking his GCSEs because he wasn't stressed at all. The teachers said, um, if you want to know how to be before your exams look at our son because he was so relaxed but he really got involved in the exams and just wasn't nervous yeah wasn't nervous so it helped him with his um, ability to concentrate and um, ability to, to remain de-stressed through the process um i, I just want what i've missed is the the picture of chernobyl um, that we put there at the very beginning. I just want to read this a little bit from an article I wrote that's on our website. It's available at bcarvacbd.com. In the 90s, 1990s, a company called Phytotech used industrial hemp crops to successfully extract poisonous radioactive elements from the soil in the Ukraine. So this is real-world, real-life, successful, scientific, evidence-backed proof that industrial hemp is a mighty and maybe even close to miraculous earth-healing plant. Chinese scientists have been using hemp to extract, remove poisonous cadmium, a heavy metal, from the soil using this phytoremediation process. So it's, it's fantastic. You know, if you're a gardener and you like planting things, what an amazing thing to plant, knowing that you're actually adding to the life of living soil, that you're actually gener helping to generate something that other plants are going to thrive from and flourish with. What a wonderful plant. So we, um, we have oil produced from hemp. We, we sell oil produced from hemp. Uh, pastes for skin, um, for muscles, and even for bone. All kinds of reasons, actually. And this guy, um, David, down in Devon, he produces 100% pure hemp soap. So he uses an ancient Korean um, permaculture technique to grow his hemp. He never puts anything into his fields that he can't put in his own body. And he goes, he goes around to small holdings and to farms throughout the country, showing them how to grow hemp in a permaculture manner, manner and then to saponify it, so to turn it into soap. So what you're seeing in these, in these little tins here and these foamers is pure saponified hemp. Pure hemp turned into soap, nothing else. And it has just as deep a cleansing effect as anything else you're likely to find, but it's fantastic for the skin. So human beings and hemp, we seem to get on with each other quite well. Um, I've used it on cuts to, to see if it could heal cuts quicker and I've got to say it has a very good effect. I've used it on bruises, I've used it on all sorts of things um, and I use it every time, you know, every time I wash my hands because it works. Can I just go back oh, yeah, to that and just, just say those little bottles, the foamers, 
um, there, the idea of using those, you know, we have to use these hand sanitizers all the time. Yeah. But these are just uh, distilled water and hemp, and I sometimes put essential oils in them as well, just so they smell nice. But of course, they're not going to dry them themselves. And when you rinse them, that water that goes down the sink, if you are washing your hands again, um, it's just hemp. It's not going to do anything to the environment either. It's all completely natural. Yeah. It's just so lovely to have those, and, and you, we use it in the washing machine and the uh, dishwasher, and, and mm. you can wash animals with it, and yeah. whatever you fancy. Fantastic stuff. So why do we do this? Well, we've learned something. We've learned that CBD activates the endocannabinoid system. Now, we might not have too much time to go into this, but the endocannabinoid system governs all these processes in human beings. So um, the main function of the endo our endocannabinoid system um, is the brain. This, it works on decision making, cognition, emotions, learning and memory. And it also regulates body movement, Anxiety, stress, fear, pain, body temperature, appetite, sense of reinforcement, blood-brain permeability, and motor control. So the endocannabinoid system, which is activated by the endocannabinoid in hemp, has this effect on our body. So this is, um, when, when I say it activates the endocannabinoid system, it activates that parasympathetic nervous system, that ability of our bodies to heal themselves from mental stresses, from um, emotional stresses, and from physical ailments. So it supports that process because it activates that inner healer that we all have. So why be karma? Why is it important to us as practitioners and us as a company um, to help people to relax and become calm? Because if you look at some of the top six benefits, you feel more in control of your emotions and your life and never was there a, a more important time to, um, to start experiencing that than now. Uh, you're in, you get increased breathing capacity, again, crucial at this time. You can actually hear your own thoughts instead of everybody else's buzzing around your head. Um, you can rediscover your creative flow. You have clearer communication and enjoy better health. Seven things karma people do naturally. And now I'm not saying we're calm all the time because far from it. Um, but we do have calming practices ourselves. So karma people, they focus on finding their center, mindfulness and meditation. They express gratitude. They sleep. They socialize. They don't keep it together all the time. They use their vacation days and they only go and switch on. What is CBD? It's a cannabidiol extracted from a hemp plant, the industrial agricultural hemp plant, not marijuana. So as you can see there, the THC content is low to zero levels. It's less than 0.2% in the UK. In America, I think they, they have less than 0.3%. We believe it supports this economic process as well. Um, we work with a system that we call triple bottom line economics, um, which puts people first, then the planet, and then profit, because business has to exist on profit. We consider that that equals prosperity, that equals holistic prosperity. And we feel that the hemp plant encourages this, and encouraging people to, to grow hemp encourages this. So we support as best we can, organic farmers and their processes and organic producers. And we would ask that you do the same wherever you can and however you can. Because we're quite limited on time, we're going to offer anybody who wants to get in touch with us or becarnacbd.com, we'll offer you a free hemp resource sheet um, which will enable you to go and do your own research because we always say that if you want to, to um, sample any of our products, please go and do your own research first. We're, we're limited by what we're allowed to say about the ability of the, the hemp plant to support you um, and to support the, the earth and phytoremediation, etc. However, there is plenty of information all over, so please get in touch with us and we'll send you that resource to you. 
because we want you to read up, speed up, and let's plant up for a cleaner, clearer, magnificent future, thanks in part to this beautiful process of industrial hemp-led bioremediation. Or phytoremediation, same thing. And like I say, we've only just scratched the surface of this enor enormous hemp CBD topic. If you'd like to know more, we offer all kinds of talks and demonstrations about hemp CBD. So it's now over to any questions. Wow. Thank you, Craig and Paul. That is uh, for an absolutely eye-opening talk there. So I just feel calmer just listening to you talk about it, let alone take it. Um, hello to everyone at home too. Thanks for tuning in. We've had a flurry of questions. Um, first up, on quite a range of issues as well, but we've got about uh, just, just under 10 minutes for questions. So this first one's from um, Robin in Powick. He says, um, do... do for you guys, do you think that the debate around the legalisation of marijuana distracts from the more important uses uh, of hemp? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think um, it, it does detract from it because um, I, we don't really agree with uh, the criminalisation of a plant anyway. Um, and it, it because it's because it's in a, a legal type arena, it takes away, we, we've just been talking about gardening today, we've just been talking about the, and focusing on the, the miraculous abilities of this plant, this amazing plant. And, you know, if, if we didn't feel so um, iffy about having conversations about it, then perhaps we could discover and explore more and, and go deeper and deeper into, into you know, what, what it brings to us. Um, so I think it does detract from it really quite a lot. It'd be great if we could be more open about it. Yeah, definitely. Even as a, a qualified CBD um, therapist, um, I can't say anything about it. Yeah, I can't. I can't say what it does. Wow. Which, like, for me as an aromatherapist, I can say about loads of different essential oils, but nothing about CBD. So yeah. But there are people who can, and they're on the internet, so please look for them, and we'll give you the resource sheet at the end. That's fascinating. Thank you for that answer. Um, there's been quite a lot of interest uh, in uh, particularly what you were saying, Paula, about um, helping your children with uh, kind of de-stressing them. I think particularly because of the stress around the exams that have been happening at the moment, obviously lots of young people struggling. Ruth in Abergavenny asks whether CBD can be prescribed by doctors or do you sort of have to do it yourself? You have to do it yourself. Right. There's no, there's no, I don't, the doctors aren't qualified and we're not qualified either to, uh, to give dosage but we have got a rough dosage of what we say is start low and go slow and just you know start on a low dosage and with kids it's a really low percentage and just take it really slowly perhaps try it out on the friday saturday sunday before they go to school so you've got an idea and, and again probably taking it three times a day it just depends on symptoms so um, we are always happy to talk to people but we can't um, advise we, we can't advise in that way what we do offer is uh, another free resource which is um, a progress log so you can download a progress log from our website um, and you can write down how many drops you're taking, why you are taking it, what the effects were, and whether you then took it up and down, and what the effects were. So in effect, you're, you're taking responsibility for your own well-being there, or your own family's well-being, and um, you're not coming in and all guns blazing and guzzling it down and sort of, oh, 100 drops. Do you know what I mean? You're being responsible. Um, and you're actually, whilst you're focusing on it, when, when your awareness is on it, it seems to really help you to get a good relationship with um, with the plant. Yeah, the plant speaks to you, and, and everybody is different. So there's levels of sensitivity in people. Um, uh, some people that have been on uh, drugs or addicts. Um, have a much higher tolerance to somebody else that might be really sensitive so it's really important to find your way with it okay um andy asks about growing your own hemp um what's the what's the process with that is it okay to do do you have to get a license what's the vibe with that 
far as I'm aware, you have to get a license. Um, and it's the Home Office that grants the license. And there's a lot of controversy around it, a lot, which is a shame because it's, um, it's, it's harmless, basically. Um, and, that, you know, we've got our own ideas as to why um, these things are happening. Um, as part of the British Hemp Alliance, um, uh, that organisation, that association, deals with lobbying government um, and just getting across to, to MPs how safe this plant is and how safe the whole process is. And um, We are getting somewhere. I think ears are beginning to open. Um, there are some companies that are licensed to grow in the UK um, medical cannabis, which is fantastic. It's a great step forward. However, we don't want to turn it into some sort of pharmaceutical because it isn't that. It's a plant. So I think there's, there's room for all, all different ways of, of using this plant and nobody should be left out because there's plenty of creative ideas as to how we can apply it to be for people and for ourselves, for our own well-being. Again, the, um, if you look for Aunt Zelda's um, TED Talks from Aunt Zelda's online, um, then, then she'll, she'll, she'll talk about some very, very interesting uses and what kind of um, explorations they've been doing in terms of well-being. Yeah, she's in the States. She's in the States, yeah. yeah. Okay. Brilliant, thank you. Our, our last question relates to that a little bit, actually. From um, This comes from Emily, uh, who's in Dimmock. Uh, I think this is in relation to what you were saying about uh, hemp's capacity to actually replace a lot of the work that crude oil does um, and, and all of the incredible products that you can make just purely using hemp. Um, she says, should the current government learn from their forefathers and encourage hemp production in, in you know, in a more industrial scale? Absolutely. Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> let's, permaculture hemp everywhere, you know, it's like, let's have it in people's gardens. If we can do it during war times, and it's considered a great resource, why is it not a great resource in peacetime? This absolutely, it's nonsensical, mm. it's ridiculous because it's a plant, and it's a plant that can really help us. We've seen what it can do to the soil. It can transform pollution that's killing our earth. Why are we not acting quicker? And we're not acting quicker because so much information has been hidden, but it's now coming to light. And I think quite a lot of MPs who are progressive in their outlook are, are, um, are coming round to a more open way of looking at it, and hopefully that legislation through much quicker because we need it now we don't need it in 10 20 years time we actually need it now as i'm sure god has a solution it's a really big solution to, to a lot of problems and we are still quite behind in this country um, yeah. with our, our views our policies the government's policies on hemp and marijuana mm -hmm. um, and cbd um but even uh, it's a very sort of volatile business to be in because yeah. uh they keep changing the rules and saying it's not this and it's not that and take this percent out and now it's down to this percent and, and you know we, do, we don't know we don't stock up a huge amount of products because uh, we don't know from one month to the next whether it's we're going to actually be, be able to stop that anymore yeah 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 it's, it's quite confused and it's quite confusing understandably it's like nobody wants anybody to to, to get into drug use but interestingly um, we know of instances where people have been using CBD to get themselves away from cannabis use and from cannabis overuse because it, 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 they tell us that it mitigates the impact of the THC in cannabis and marijuana. So um, that's, that's all we can say that what we've been told, that's what we've been told. And there are research studies that are now sort of coming out of the woodwork. Um, it's really interesting what it could do with some real action from um, yeah, it people needs in to places. speed up. It really yeah. needs to speed up. Sounds like such a fascinating industry to, I mean, frustrating as much as fascinating industry yeah. to be in. Um, I'm just quite curious, as a last little question, whether you think that we'll see a change in legislation sort of in our lifetimes. Obviously, in America, it's something sort of state by state basis. Do you think that's something that we'll see in this country? 
Well, I think it's just inevitable. Yeah. It's inevitable it's going to come. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you heard yeah. it here first, folks. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I think it's also if we don't, if we don't get moving quick. Right. Yeah. Um, brilliant. Well, thank, thank you. you so much. to <laughs> Thank you to Paula and so, Craig. Uh, coming in CBD. We know what's coming. Right. Edibles and all sorts. <laughs> gotcha. Understood. Okay. <laughs> right well thank you very much Paula and Craig uh, from Be Karma CBD for that fascinating talk um, and for everyone who's tuned into our events over this weekend this is now the end of uh, Helen's Garden Festival Reimagined 2020 the events are all available now on our YouTube channel um, and one final cl plug for our Just Giving page uh, where you can donate to our, our charities that we are uh, helping out that's justgiving.com forward slash crowdfunding forward slash HTF uh, but for now, thank you again to Paula and Craig and see you soon.